So, um, how was that? Good stuff? Further down the rabbit hole? Who found that their internal experiences as a subject are starting to become a little more vivid than before now? As these, these experiences are being described and so on, yes? So we're just gradually ramping up our toolkit to essentially uh, open doors inside the minds to allow experiences to come out, and then we'll figure out what to do with those experiences in due course, right? Who feels good about the toolkit you have so far? Anyone? Who would like a little bit more on that toolkit before we finish up for the day? Well, all right then. The rest of you can go home. <laughs> the four of you, you put your hands up, stick around, I'll show you something more. Can we try that one again? Who would like to have another tool in their toolkit before we finish up? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> All right. So let's have a little chat right now. And um, assistants, can we up you to the mics, please? Let's have a little chat right now. What, what kind of things did you notice are telling you when you know, you're talking to a subject? There's clearly a change that happens physiologically. You see things happening that don't normally happen when you talk to them in a normal conversation. Right? And I don't just mean eye closure. It would be true to have a strange conversation with someone like this the whole day. <laughs> happens. So please come on up and tell me what kind of distinctions are you seeing? What kind of things are you noticing is happening inside their body? Something you can actually physically uh, see or sense in terms of maybe a rhythm or something like that. That tells you that something is occurring that doesn't normally happen in a conversation. Come on up, folks. This is the interactive bit. Go ahead. Uh, you can see them kind of slumping over. That's so you can see them one. slumping over, right? So the, the whole skeleton thing. Why do you think they're slumping over? Because they're relaxing more, they're turning more inside. So. Excellent. So their physical musculature is relaxing, so the things that keep them upright suddenly doesn't work so well, right? Right. Beautiful. Fantastic. Uh, so let's have a look here. Let's have a look at, um, we'll call it muscle relaxation. Excellent. So I'm, I'm sure you have some more as well, but let's have some other people come up as well because we want to share as a group, right? Go ahead. Um, catalepsy. So they, they, they are more or less frozen. Uh, like so this have you noticed that people uh, often, they don't always do this, but one of the tendencies is for them to become a little more rigid, uh, less mobile, right? So we'll put immobility here. <coughs> right? And we'll put in brackets catalepsy because it's related, although they're not necessarily always the same thing. They are related, though, right? What other things have you noticed? Oh. Oh, we have it here? Go ahead, yeah. Yeah. Um, instead of being focused on you, then they become withdrawn from you and focused on their internal sure. experience. So how can you tell from externally that they're more internally focused? Uh, they no longer have eye contact directly at you. Right. So what's the difference between someone doing this? Am I internally focused right now? Um, yes. So there's something you can tell is happening, but you don't quite sure what it is. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. So there are signals that somehow their attention is internalizing, but it's not entirely obvious at first glance what those signals might be, right? Yeah. They may be partially p postural, right? It may be in terms of like, for example, the way they turn their ears. If someone's listening to you, they'll usually do this. And they'll turn their ear towards you. And in trance, they might just slump down and not really follow or respond to your changes and stuff like that uh, as much, right? Do you see what we're talking about here? So your, your read of the situation may well be correct, but we're also interested in those, in those other signals. But for the moment, we'll say, we'll call it an inward orientation. Does that work for you guys? Yes, it does. Okay, let's go on. What else do we have? Uh, further to the inward orientation and the muscle relaxation, I think what you're referring to is flat affect around the eyes, specifically the muscles around the eyes, exactly. the forehead, so it's, it's the cheeks. Describe that for people who haven't come across the term before. So what's happening to the muscles around the eyes? The, the, uh, the muscles around, around the eyes, the forehead, the cheeks, they completely go slack. Right. And as a result, what are you seeing? Uh, it's, it, well, it looks like the face actually drops. The eyes are open a bit more. And if their eyes are open, if their eyes are closed, it'll be more the the whole socket here becomes a little wider. Right. Instead of being scrunched up like some people are, can you see this? As my face relaxes, do you notice how the general area where my eye would be if my eyes were open becomes a little larger, right? 
And you notice how some people walk around and say, yes, I'm very relaxed right now. <laughs> what are you talking about? And then in the chance they go, yeah, but you know, there are other ways to relax. And that's the... Yeah, another time that you can see it is if you, um, if you find yourself on the computer for a few hours or find yourself watching TV for a few hours and go look in the mirror, you'll actually see it in yourself typically. Yep. If, you, uh, if you're on the computer for a few hours. Yeah, no, you're right, no, you're good. Just okay, bring it closer. If, you, uh, if, you're been, if you've been on the computer for a few hours, like staring at it constantly or watching TV or a movie, and then go right to a mirror and look at your own face, you'll see that you have flat affect at that point. So you, you'll start to understand the difference then. And that's because watching your TV, working on the computer, reading a book, don't they share some things in common in what you've been experiencing here? Would that be fair to say? Not entirely the whole thing. Some are more absorbing than others, but they, show, they share a lot of commonalities, don't they? Um, that's something to be curious about. Maybe we'll get a chance to talk about that tomorrow. What do you think? <laughs> Couldn't happen, not in Vegas. Luckily, we're not in Vegas. <laughs> Anything else? What other things have you guys noticed? So someone, go ahead. I quite often notice that uh, people will swallow more so or, or feel a need to, to, to cough or give a little... <coughs> so what we'll talk about is a swallow reflex, but let's, let's keep it more open ended. Anyone notice anyone's swallow reflex uh, inhibiting those? Not this, they swallow less. Anyone notice that happening? That can happen too. As a rule, uh, wait, there's no real rule. Sometimes it swallows less, sometimes it just it cuts out. Sometimes it'll increase. Typically what will happen, although this is never, you know, there's never a typical client, but what you may often discover is they swallowed initially more frequently and suddenly they stop entirely, right? So there's something to look out for. So we'll just put out the swallow reflex uh, changes because it's really the changes that are more interesting than anything else, right? Someone can quite happily go into a trance and not have that flat, uh, fl uh, flat affect or the flaccidity of the facial expression that we've been talking about, right? They can do it without their swallowing reflex changing, but it's a very common thing to happen. Very good. What other things do you guys notice? Come on up. I just wanted to touch on the swallow reflex. Yeah. Um, that also changes when people get nervous. It can very much happen. It's just part of a, a change. So what these physiological signs show you as a change of consciousness, right? And they mean many things, right? For example, um, you can have a tension because you're nervous, or some people actually get more tense when they get into trance, believe it or not, especially if you suggest it, which is, of course, makes it more interesting. So um, right now, we're not looking at any specific signal as the one thing. What we're looking for is a package. And a package of someone changing their swallow reflex when they go into trance will look different to the swallow reflex changing when there is nervousness or tension or some of that involved. Does that kind of make sense? Yes. And it's a good point to bring up because, you know, there's no one thing you're looking for. Come on up. So thank you for that. This is not uh, um, something that I'm noticing in uh, the ones I'm practicing with. Okay. But um, I start to relax more when I'm trying to induce uh, trance to them. I'm certainly very happy to hear that. Because how else could you take the whole of the ramshackle farm that Emil Kuhe used to use as his environment and take it with you? You see, uh, in, the old in the old days, and we're talking about 19th century, you know, Victorian days, when hypnosis was really just a parlor trick that got brought from literally one parlor to another, which basically means someone's front room where a dozen people would watch, some guy puts someone in trance and do lots of things. At the time, uh, the hypnotists of the, the, the period really didn't um, have anywhere near the kind of skill sets that we're developing here. And so what they would typically do is find a, a great hypnotic subject, a somnambulist, and then they'd basically cart them around. They'd be their trance monkey. They'd go and say, hey, I'm a great hypnotist. Watch this. Boo! Now, of course, it's going to work. These people have been conditioned to, to, to the max. And then they can do all these cool things, right? But then, of course, if they, if they said, well, try it with me. And they'll go, well, I don't know. It doesn't work with everyone. No, of course it doesn't. It's because you don't know how to do it with everyone. So we have a bigger skill set. The problem is, in today's world, if you try and track around a, 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 a trance monkey everywhere you go, you may well be accused of some form of slavery, <laughs> right? 
Maybe your thing, I don't know. But there is one trance monkey that you can carry around everywhere you go. It's not me personally. <laughs> yeah. I'll be, just tell me where to go. I'll be there. <laughs> but you bring yourself. And that's one of the reasons for the H+, one of the reasons for altering your state, is because then you don't tell people go into a trance. You tell people, go into a trance. And there's a big difference between that, isn't there? So thank you, that's a very good point. Go ahead. Spontaneous twitching. Twitching, oh, we love this. What does it mean when someone starts twitching when they're going to trance? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> it's just one of the physiological changes. For some people, it's a way to relax because even their attention sometimes twitches and allows them to release. For other people, it's got nothing to do with that. All we can, all we can uh, say with absolute conviction is that it is not uncommon that people will twitch either on the way into trance or sometimes all the way through it, but usually it's one of the signs that happens as they go through the gateways into whatever level of, tra level, level of trance they'll be working at, right? Very nice. So this is not the entire list, of course, but we've got some pretty good things going here, don't we? Would it be fair to say? And you've all experienced at least one or two of these things on this list, personally, as well as observing them in other people. Is that correct? Can I have a volunteer, please? Anyone will do. Come on up. Give him a round of applause, folks. <laughs> can I have a mic? Gabe? Gabe. Can you bring the mic up? Yes, sir. No, 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 just we want to have the whole stand so he can just talk. You're not going to be much talking. It's just the, there'll be a couple of sections in which we might. Might as well start off with that. Yeah. Right? Just, uh, can you guys can hear him now? Can you hear yep. him? Yeah? Yep. Good? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if I say so. Yeah, it won't last.